Hey everybody, and welcome to Elden Dogs. This is the first episode in our coverage of Shadow of the Erd Tree, and we are so excited to be back talking about this. Uh, before we get into the episode, though, just a heads up, this episode has been out for uh, about six weeks now for our uh, Patreon supporters. It's been out for a while, anyways, and... It is now just it is just now getting to the main feed. If you want access to episodes in advance, uh, check out patreon.com slash hair of the dog cast. Uh, the Patreon members are already through Bellarat Tower and they get the episodes every two weeks and roughly here on the main feed, Elden Dogs arrives once a month. So the further out, the further uh, they further they get spaced out. But uh, so if you're curious, we even have a free trial, and we recommend just checking it out. Uh, but for as low as the $3 a month tier, you can get uh, Elden Dogs early. And if you're curious, patreon.com slash hair the dog cast. Otherwise, enjoy our, our first discussion uh, in Shadow of the Erd Tree. Everybody and welcome to Elden Dogs. Elden Dogs is back, everyone. We're so excited. I can't, I can't uh, sum up my feelings and my emotions in less than twenty five hours. So <laughs> we're gonna we'll be cooking for a while here. Um, I was known as Sir Gideon Offnir. We will be debuting our new characters next episode when we dive in properly into the to a deep dive. But just today, you can call me Brad. And I'm Tyler, formerly known as Alexander, but... Ooh, you're going to try and distance yourself from Alexander, I see, huh? Well, he's broken. Uh, uh, before we get into anything, uh, light spoilers. Spoilers, actually, just spoilers. We won't say who the final boss is because, Tyler, you haven't made it there yet. Nope. And we're not going to spoil anything ahead of Tyler, but to play it safe, if you don't want anything spoiled... Avoid this episode for now and come back. But you were saying, uh, now that spoiler wall is broken. Oh, yeah, no, just that Alexander, I mean, he's dead. He is dead. Yeah, and, and, that, and Gideon's so. been dead for a while, too. Yeah. So it is time that I pick a new person. But I was finally able to dive into the DLC. And I'm glad I waited because I had a lot going on work-wise and some indie game month stuff. Yeah. Now, yesterday evening, I beat the DLC for the second time. That's impressive. It's so good, dude. <laughs> um, yes, Shadow of the Earth Tree. Initial thoughts, great. Uh, very fucking good. Best DLC I've ever played. I was thinking about that on the way over here, and I didn't know if I was going to say, like, best DLC I've ever played, but I normally don't get DLCs. Yeah, I just, uh, the I, new Cyberpunk one. I know you were hot on that. That was the only one that I could think of that rivaled this. As far as, like, content and story... And, I mean, this is unparalleled as far as the scope of the DLC here. The Witcher 3 had a good DLC, too. Both yeah. Online. And The Witcher 3's DLC was ranked number one as the best DLC of all time until Shadow of the Erd Tree. And they released some super sick art, uh, the oh, that's studio right. yeah. of... Uh, was it Geralt fighting Moog? It was Geralt having killed Moog. Yeah. And we also want to... Uh, issue an apology to Moog. You don't know enough about it yet, but... Uh, oh, I'm starting to learn. Yeah, Moog, we're sorry. We were we were quick to judge. We didn't have all the facts. You still kind of suck. Yeah. But we don't know how much of it was uh, your choice. So, Moog, we apologize. Um. So do you want me to put up my spoiler wall so you know what I know? That would be, that would be good, yes, before we jump in. Okay, so I am... I fought Mesmer about... 14 times last night before bed. Mesmer's good. I I got him close twice. 
other than that, that motherfucker, I'm going to have to come back to. I, I got some leveling up to do because I can get him down to like close to a quarter of his health bar. And then he just work, murks me. His second form with the snakes is a nightmare. And he moves so quickly and so mm. much fire, I mm. can't fucking tell where he's at. I'm dancing right now with excitement about it. I can't tell where he's at. I think Mesmer might be my favorite boss battle of the DLC. It is so far. It is the most technical, the most fun to uh, anticipate moves, the most fun to dodge. You do not know about the final boss, which is the toughest boss I have fought in any video game ever. Damn. Easily. And I got destroyed by the Orphan of Cost for a long time. I haven't played Sekiro. I know people say Sekiro is... If you want tough bosses, that's the one to do. But, um, And then story-wise, so as much as I know so far, is I accidentally triggered a shattering of some sort. Okay, yes. The, the sky lit up gold, and I, got, I was just riding torrent, minding my own business, and something shattered somewhere. I forget this specific wording, but yeah. a, a great rune is shattered, and it is a small point of no return. There are a number of complaints people have about the DLC, and one of them is the NPC quests, man. It's out there. It's just like every other FromSoft game, though, where it's very easy to miss things. It's very easy to mess, like, screw up timing. It's sometimes wonky having to talk to a character, reload, talk to him again, like uh, yeah. travel back to that site of grace. It's a little weird. And I was fortunate enough my first playthrough to almost miss nothing. But you and I are playing a different way. I know uh, my brother was playing and he actually triggered it early. There is a number of NPC quests that might, you might miss out on a couple items. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And I'm not super worried about missing out because it's a DLC I'm going to play again. And I mean, this is just the the order of events and my exploration, which for me, the biggest thing about the DLC that I enjoy is that sense of exploration and not knowing what's going to come next. Because mm -hmm. uh, for the DLC, I played my strength faith build through and beat the game. And it's much better than my spell sword build. So it's now my new main. Interesting, because my first DLC play was a intelligence dexterity build. And uh, she... She's modeled after my wife. She does a lot of uh, like range sorceries, Wing of Estelle, and she kind of got spanked. Um, she got spanked a lot, and my strength faith build I did for my second playthrough. Once I found that great katana, I kept I kept experimenting, but whenever something was going down, I'm like, well. Well, let me pull out this ridiculously long 10-foot sheath I've been carrying around. <laughs> Sephiroth would be afraid of me with that fucker. And it's nice, too, because I go up against a, a enemy weak to a certain thing, just go change my affinity and change the scaling, throw some grease on that bitch. Yeah. I the, the Blasphemous Blade is incredibly overpowered. You need to keep experimenting, though. I know, but... Well, I got the... The twin, the Death Knight's twin axes, yeah, and I got those up to like plus eight or nine, and I've been rocking those a little bit because they scale with faith, and I mean it makes the game a little more challenging because it's like three hundred less damage, but it's just kind of fun to just beat dudes down with dual axes. Oh yeah, well what what's so great about the great katana is almost every enemy other than you know the biggest of jars some horned warriors, uh, some big type enemies. Uh, it, it's like instantly interrupts their attacks and stops them and stops them. So I just, I'm slow, but I get a, uh, I can just get combos in where they can't respond. And it's, it's just fucking good. Yeah. I'm going to have to do something different for Mesmer because he's fire and the blasphemous, blasphemous blade is fire. Yeah. So, I've been using Bloodhound's Fang because that's my usual go-to bleed weapon mm -hmm. because I can rock it pretty well mm -hmm. and I have it all the way up plus 10. So that's usually my go-to, but I just, I found the great, the giant katana. That's I just, what, yeah, I, like I just don't have enough de dexterity to wield it. Yeah. So I might respec and just move a few points around a little bit because there is quite a few weapons that I have to equip a talisman to use because I don't have enough dex. I was surprised to hear what level you were playing at. In the DLC. Well, that's when I started. I'm over 120 now. I'm getting close to 130. That's fucking low to me. 
But it's that's good. I don't know. I think a lot of people going to this DLC were Chad leveled, like 150, 200. Okay, yeah. So I, I wanna... they also quickly found out it doesn't matter too much getting started. Uh, some things it helps to have a lot more health, but a lot of it comes down to the shadow tree fragments. I don't know how far I am or if they actually did patch the game, but there was a lot of criticism that this game was too hard. People are so dumb. I didn't die until I got to the hippo. That's which the golden hippo? Yeah. I beat What bosses did you beat? I beat the lion. I beat Ranala. You beat Rolana. Rolana, yeah. I'm telling you the blast. You beat Rolana first try. That's pretty good. I'm telling you, the blasphemous blade. The hippo murked me though. Like I got killed like four times in a row real quick. Yeah. Um But You didn't the, you didn't go to the Western Nameless Mausoleum, I'm guessing. No. The Black Jail Knight. The Black Jail Knight. What okay. does he drop? Well, he's the very first boss you most people run into, and they get destroyed. Oh, no. I thought you guys were talking about one of the invaders at the first castle. There's a knight that invades you, and he has like a fire poker. Oh, uh, it's Queeline. Yeah. I thought that was the knight that we were talking about in the DLC, and I was like, what? No. I was like, what's going on? And then that's when pe- when... I was reading that people said the game was hard, and then you guys were talking about a knight, and I thought it was that that <laughs> fucking dude. I was like, am I a god? Am I just that good? You are going to see the final boss, and you're going to be crying, and you're going to say, Bradley, I don't know what happened. Well, I've gotten to the point now where I cannot beat I cannot beat Mesmer. I have to go back. I have to get more sad, sad, Sh- shadow, sad trees. Shadow tree. Shadow tree a fragments. Lot, a lot of people say scatter tree. Uh, it is Old English, and I believe it is Shadu. Shadu. That's, that's what Google yielded. I need to do some leveling up. But then, lore-wise, my spoiler is, uh, what is your character's name? The beard and the mask. Oh, Ansbach. I will be Ansbach. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Ansbach. Ansbach, he's a good guy. They have uh, they have taken Moog's body, yeah. and they are going to use his body as a vessel for the king consort. Apparently, Michael is up to some shit. Allegedly, and then they're talking about some shit with Radon. There's, there's a lot of talk. So there's a lot of talk about a lot of people. That's as far as I've gotten into the story. At Mm -hmm. least that's what I know. You are also on a bit of a beeline, maybe unintentionally, but you see where they tell you to go when you go there. Which for me, I actually go everywhere but there on my playthrough. Oh yeah, no, they said to go do it, so I did it. Oh yes, you. There's uh, so much. I'm <clears throat> doubling back now. I need I need to get stronger for Mesmer. So I'm doubling back at this point. So yes, let's talk about some of the other complaints people have, like the difficulty. Uh, I think it's. Funny. I don't know what people fucking thought they were getting into with a From Software DLC. Did you not think there you would get spanked? And is that not a little bit why we're here? Don't we like to get spanked? We are a little bit of masochists. I kind of like to get spanked sometimes, dude. That fucking monk dude that jumps off the top of that little tower, the, like the first enemy you can run into, he's. Sitting on one of those little, like... Oh, a little curse blade. That, fuck that dude. <laughs> you know oh. what sucks about him? They also drop only like 3,000 runes. It's they, not even worth your time. No. But their armor is sick. And I was making my checklist of things I'm missing, and I do need some ascetic armor set. Uh, yeah, difficulty. The the way this game levels up, so just your level 116, your level 250 when you go in, you will be nerfed down to a low level because you level up with shadow tree fragments and that's how you level up essentially how much damage you can take and how much damage you can give and that goes for all of your damage dealing and all of your damage receiving uh you start at you know shadow tree level one (laughs) there are 50 shadow tree fragments scattered throughout the map there's 50 50 oh damn and my first playthrough I found that I was missing maybe 15 when I was at the end, and then I realized I would never actually beat the final boss, so I just went and, I better find these fucking fragments. And then there's the revered spirit ashes, which power up your spirit ashes, and I believe that's what also helps Torrent get able to take more damage as well. Yeah, it's kind of funny because the the sa- sh- sa- shadow sh- shadow tree shadow tree fragments level me up and the other ones uh level up my my mimic tier. levels up you it's just well. it's me and it's thing one and thing two at this point my my uh love affair with the mimic tier 
ended the first playthrough because I don't know if the AI, they changed it, but I noticed that my sorceress mimic tier, she was a big old useless pile of poopy and I abandoned her pretty quick and it's my, my great katana motherfucker. That's a good mimic tier. Yeah. Because we just like alternate hits and it is just blood loss, blood loss, blood loss. It's oh yeah. Well, me and, uh, I call him Frank cause I have a dog named Frank. You so Frankie. I call my mimic tier Frank and we just takers flame over and over. And it's just like the range on it is insane. So if he draws aggro, I can just hit you from across the arena sometimes. I, I do love when I have on my hot bar a hefty furnace pot, which is the strongest, biggest fire pot. Oh, yeah. Don't use them. Oh, I use y- them. You want to save those for something specific. You'll be fine without them, but you want them. Okay. Uh, don't worry. There's a lot more uh, visages, visages out there, but it's great when I'm holding some on my hot bar and then my mimic gets summoned, and he's just yep. lofting those fuckers <laughs> like crazy. I love big pots. Uh, and I cannot lie. And you, <laughs> your other brothers, your other tarnished can't deny <laughs> that when a horn scent walks in with a little bitty pot and a and a caterpillar mask in your face, you uh, get greased. You get greased, motherfucker. <laughs> um, yes, so... If you, it's just like the main game. I remember when the first time you played base game Elden Ring, you and Devin, it's like you walk forward, you see Margit, then you turn around. <laughs> yep. Um, I do, I do think that I didn't expect the world to be as cool as it was going to be and as, as big as it was going to be. And you saying that Holy I made shit so big when you said I made a beeline. I realized that while I was playing last night because I'm like, I'm fighting Mesmer. And I don't know if my cor- my prediction was correct. Because you're probably at what, hour f- 15 of your playthrough? Yeah, probably pretty close. Like, I mean, I'd count three hours of super drunk playing as one hour of real playing, maybe. Yeah, that first night I was hammered. I, I will say I was near blackout the first time I did the Halo Tree. <laughs> and I woke up the next day and I was like, what is going on here? Man. Well, I realized I was drunk. So I didn't want to do anything to fuck my my play up. So I was like, I'm just going to try and kill this fire giant as many times as I can. The big furnace golem thing that you run into right away. So I just spent a long time fighting him and then I went to bed. Yeah. uh, Furnace golems are the worst, dumbest enemies in the game. I don't like them at all. Well, they're uh, the design. Stunning. Beautiful. I like looking at you. And it's nice because you can be a billion miles away and they have a less loaded in version so you can see it moving around over there. Yeah. It helps landmarks. It helps uh, just, you can keep track of like kind of where you are. They're not fun to fight after the first couple. And I guess you're going to have, you'll figure you'd figure it out anyways, because there are eventually you find them with armor on their legs and you can't attack their legs. So you have to get up high and you throw pots into the top. Oh, hell yeah. This is We're cool. playing basketball. <laughs> <Yeah>. Kobe. <laughs> um, they're so not fun to play. Fuck that, dude. They're so not fun. There's so many of them, too. Um, but yes, the difficulty. So uh, collect more shadow tree fragments. Collect mm-hmm. more revered spirit ashes. My major gripe with the whole system, there is a finite number. You need all of them to level up to level 20 Shadow Tree. You can't miss any. And they're hidden. Like, some of them you get in, like, the main path. Some of them are off the beaten path. A random enemy drops them. You see a shiny Shadow Undead with a glowy pot, kill them. They're carrying items. Oh, no shit. But if it, you're not going to find them all uh, unless you're very um, meticulous and kind of lucky. So I don't like that. You need them all to level up to 20. And I don't like that you just find them in the map. I wish it was defeating bosses. Gate. Like, you defeat a boss, you get three of them. I do. And then you just, like, that'd be a cool way. If every boss you defeated and there was, like, 50 bosses in the map, I would really like that more, I think. Uh, they do have, like, those buildings that are kind of like Churches of America. Um, and I think I found one at one of those. I do like that where you used to find, like, uh, Sacred Tears. 
yeah. in the base game. Like that makes sense that you'd find one landmarks. In this place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Instead of random fucking enemies. Yeah, it is weird how sometimes like they'll be tucked. I found one like in a cave randomly. I, I'm, sh- I think I'm up to level eight. The number in the parentheses is what level you are, your your shadow tree level, right? Shadow. Yeah, I'm eight. Yep. Um, I will say second playthrough is different than the first. First playthrough, no guides. Until I need a gesture. Because I'm not going to fucking know that one. Yeah. There's two times you need a gesture. Well, the monk. You know that one. There is another one where you're like, how do I get there? That's the only place I can't get. How do I get there? And you got to do a specific gesture at a specific spot. And fine. That's some real esoteric from software shit. I would never have found that without a guide. Some dweeb on a playground would have told me if I was a younger kid. Well, you texted me how to find that lever. It, yeah. took, it took me forever and a goddamn day to find that thing. Man, you were going through the specimen storehouse so weirdly. Um, Dude, for real, man. I, I, essentially, I, I knew you could get down. Yeah, I hope we're not spoiling too much for people. You're here. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the specimen storehouse, if you go through the back section, it's more like a super hot, quick pat to the top, and you were going down it to the bottom. Then you entered the front door from behind. Dude, when I killed the hippo, and then I saw the big door, and I was like, oh, here we go. And then you went back to where you were. And then I opened it, and I was like, this is the beginning? Yeah. And then it dawned on me that I had done it backwards, and I was like, the fuck is going on? Which is valid. I mean, it's a valid way, but yeah, there's... Okay, so let's say you take the front door. There's probably four different ways out of the keep. Yeah, because you can go left or right from the hippo. There's a lot of ways you can go do things. Plus, I'm sure you missed um, by the tibia mariner boats and the vulgar militia. There's a ladder there that can you can go down. Didn't even see the tibia mariner boat. There's a, like eight boats in a row that are kind of burning. Oh, yeah. Yep. There's a ladder around there. Oh, yeah. There's a ladder that you can get down, and then you go to the yeah. into the swampy area, yep. and then there's the dead uh, furnace guy. Very good. Yeah. I went down that way and then realized it took me out of the keep, and I was like, I didn't fight a boss because I hadn't found the hippo yet, so I was like, I got to go back. Mm-hmm. So then I went back, and then I went out the other side, and I ended up in the jungle place, and I was like... I didn't fight a boss. I got to go back. Some other new concepts, Mikola's crosses. There's not a ton of mechanics to them other than they're around the map. You'll see them. They're marked on your map. Mm -hmm. Spirit springs. Have you discovered a spirit spring that doesn't work yet? Uh, I did topple some rocks. Oh, okay. And I unlocked one, but I have no idea what they are, where where it is. So I have to do some exploring. If you topple the rock, there is, rocks, there is a spirit spring right next to those rocks. Oh, sweet. Well, where was that fucking building at? Well, okay, so critical path. Let's just, uh, well, first, how do, how do we get into the DLC? You have to defeat Moog and Radon. You need to go to the Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum, and there you will find a new NPC named Leda. And she's like, come on, dude, touch that fucking arm. Do it slow. I want to watch. <laughs> Essentially, her and her follower, or not her followers, her and a, a group, uh, a party of like-minded uh, rapscallions. They're a, they're a mixed bag. There's a lot of them. You got, you got the horn scent. He's just kind of a native out there. You have Freya. She's, she's like, I love Radon. He's my homie. He's my guy. Ansbach, my favorite dude. He, he's, he's Team Moog. Yeah. More, more you don't know a lot about, and you won't learn a lot about him unless you do some really weird stuff, which you've already missed. But he's associated with pests, which is cool. Teolier, St. Trina. Uh, you'll meet Teolier eventually. And it's just a, a weird group. But yeah, then you touch the withered arm, and that's Mikola's dead body. So Mikola had to abandon his body to go there. Do some weird magic shit. He needed Moog to take him there, cocoon him up. But you can tell because the ring that Mikola is wearing, uh, 
in like the the cutscenes, the trailers, is the same ring that the withered arm has. So I know some people were trying to say that that wasn't Mikola in the cocoon, but it is indeed Mikola. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Then you go to the realm of shadow, uh, just the size of Limgrave, <clears throat> little a little area. Yeah, it is super stunning. It's kind of like a little bit grim. Maybe when he, uh, he says the size of Limgrave, he means if you took Limgrave and set it on its side, it's that tall. I think that's what Miyazaki really meant. Yeah, because it's it's bigger than I, it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. Because I still have to uncover like at least two map portions. Yeah, it looks like you'll have tricky time, maybe. Well, I think I found where one is, but I don't want to go that far because I'm already like kind of a little further ahead than I should be. You're you're going to find some scary stuff, dude. I'm going back now, and I'm most I'm just going to start. Pacing through. You got a lot, a uh, lot to explore. Very happy about it. Um, yes, the Realm of Shadow. This region appears to originally have been located in the center of the lands between. People have done the map comparisons, dropped it in the center. It makes sense. There is a location called the Suppressing Pillar in the Gravesite Plains, and it even says on a description, the very center of the lands between. Pretty conclusive. Yeah. And the veil is what's hiding it. Uh... The horn scent were this air, this realm, this people were warred upon by Mesmer, another child of Queen America and possibly the eldest. He was born with a snake living inside of him who threatened to take him over. To prevent this, Merica removed one of his eyes and placed her seal there instead. Oh, that makes sense then. Forgive me, mother. Uh, he's cool. Um, I have a theory that he was born with a tapeworm and the tapeworm just grew up <laughs> and he, because ta- that boy is skinny. The, the tapeworm got the great rune and the tapeworm is just yeah. like a big old monster. Uh, cause that, that snake pisses me off. Um, I think it's kind of cute. I mean, it's cool. I have a snake tattooed on my arm, so I'm kind of like, I'm kind of cool about it, but I don't like getting beat that much. Very competitive. Um, he's got the coolest character design by far of anything close to millennia. I'd say those are my two favorite. Yeah, I might have to have to agree. I also am a big Moog fan, though, because the the horn curving into the eye, that's pretty dope, too. Moog is heavy metal as fuck. Uh, yes, Mesmer was sent to the Realm of Shadow to enact a war of vengeance upon the horn scent. He, so the horn scent are the tower people? Yes. The, anyone that's got, like, the Cattermiller mask, like the horn faces? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yes... Mesmer was sent to do a war that nobody wanted, that uh, would never be acknowledged. Uh, horrible atrocities. So and the Coast Guard. That was a bad joke. <laughs> no, I, I, possibly. I don't know. I was just making fun of the Coast Guard. But yeah, but Mesmer's got his own crew. They all go there. It's like uh, Rolana is Ranala's younger sister, and she's like, yes, I'm coming. Uh, Gaius. Have you seen Gaius? I don't think so. What does Gaius look like? He's riding an animal? No. You don't want to. <laughs> Gaius was the second most difficult boss for me. Gaius sounds like a good time. Okay. He got patched. Initially, uh, the first time, sometimes the first time you uh, run into a boss, they start far away. And you're like, what the fuck's going on over there? And then they come to you? Yeah. Uh, initially, every time you re enter the door, Gaius would be fucking full speed, like 10 feet away from you, ready to destroy you. But then they patched it into where he starts further away every time to give you a moment to breathe. Some people were dying so fast that their uh, their runes were not even through the, the fog gate. They were to stay on the other side of the door. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> no joke. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Mikola, twin brother to Melania. And the Empyrean, whose steps we follow in the DLC, is attempting something. I won't spoil it for you. Let's just say that there are plans. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm trying to follow it a little more closely than, than I did the main story. And I think I'm succeeding. But then, like we've covered already last night, I realized that I had kind of pushed the pace a little fast. Because I am. I felt like I was further than I should be. But I was like, this castle's cool. I'm staying here. It's not further than you should be. It is where, uh, precisely where you mean to. Yeah, where Gerard's story currently is. Yeah. Of course, you named him after My Chemical Romance. Of course. (laughs) 
My name is uh, my character's name is Martin Lionel, named after my cat. <laughs> that's a good, I do, but he have, looks like me. He does look like me. I did name my spirit ash after my dog, so yeah, that's a common thread. Fingers and jars. We learned a lot about both of them. Uh, w- what are your thoughts on jars? Um, did you like that the bo- uh, Ballarat Jail? It, I mean, amazing dungeon. I hate the platforming. I I died more platforming than anything jumping down the jars which was cool was that your first time seeing the inside of a jar yeah 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 that was gross and then they have like some half-life fucking two thing that comes out of their stomach <laughs> scared the shit out of me and then there's oftentimes those motherfuckers will be around a corner the amount of times i've jumped there's a lot more corner and surprise attacks in the dlc than there was in the main game i feel yeah it's uh- terrifying uh, something that I found super useful is you can like enter a network code. I forget what it is in the settings. Mine is set to the bonfire side chat group and then Vati Vidya. So generally, I mean, I'm seeing messages and, you know, the blood uh, stains from more like-minded individuals. If I entered the network code Fortnite, it would be a lot of fingers but holes. Yeah. But, oh, I didn't know that. I would like to be on the same one. Because there's a lot of times where, I mean... If there's a message before a turn and it says, be wary of right, I'm going to be wary of right. I dropped one in uh, the Shadow Keep, be wary of left, and it's getting appraised the fuck out of it. Yeah. I said that weird, but you get what I mean. And then I went back and some asshole put the same message, but further, like closer to the way you would come. And I was like, don't try it, to. It could have been light. there. Be- it could have been there before. Nah, I was first. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't dim my light. Nah, but there's there's a, a number of times. There's one really weird uh, quest progression way down south where you have to do something stupid multiple times in a row, but the message said this and this and then this and this, and I was able to parse it out, which was cool. Uh, so yeah, a critical path once you enter the the area. The first mandatory boss is the Golden Hippopotamus. You're able to get really to, to the golden hippo without doing anything else. I figured it would have been the lion. You, you didn't get anything from that. No, I got a cool helmet. Yeah, you did. I got a cool helmet. Put the helmet on and go talk to that old lady if you haven't talked to her yet. Did you talk to the old lady in there? Horn scent grandum? Oh, yeah. Talk to her with the helmet on. Is he going to freak her out? <laughs> well, it's like if... uh, it, Just do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Golden Hippopotamus, you go up and you've met Mesmer. After that, there's one more boss, and then the final boss is the critical mandatory path. No shit. Because, yeah, even Rolana, there's a way to sneak around the back with a spirit spring. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's the speedrunning implications are pretty cool. One thing that's awesome for the second playthrough, I can look at the guides. I can look at the Fextra Life map. And I got to level 10 before fighting a single enemy, pretty much. Helps when you can just go directly to, you know, everything on the map that you're looking for. Yeah, because some some of those shadow trees. Shadow tree. Shadow. (laughs) Shadow. Shadow tree fragments. You don't have to do anything to get. They're just laying around. Some major areas and quests. Um, You've already met Count Amir. Mm-hmm. At the Cathedral of Manus Metter. Yep. That was pretty cool. You uh, haven't gone to the, you haven't followed his map to the first spot, though, I can tell. No. And is there a way to look at the maps better? Like, because you press, like, you can bring the map up. Yeah. The, those maps that they give you are useless. It's drawn by, like, a blind kindergartner. You'll know. And the you'll, size of a thumbnail. You'll know when you get there. Because I'm like, if I could just get a little closer to it and see what it actually is that'd be nice luckily my phone has a million times zoom Mm -hmm. so i i've zoomed in on him and you can kind of see you he also said something when i was leaving because he was like hey what's up we don't really get many visitors like it's cool that you're here let me give you some like a medium offering and i was like all right cool and then he gave me the bell or whatever to like do the the whole shit and then i was like 
because I keep talking to people until they repeat themselves like three times. Naturally. And then you reload and do it again. Yes. And so I'm talking to him. And then he said something that images of Bach just flashed through my mind because he's like, please mind yourself on the way out. You wouldn't want to hurt the poor boy or something like that. I'm like, who do you got locked up in here? There is another character in that room, too, that you might have missed. Yeah, I didn't look. The sword hand of Night Yolan. Well, I didn't look too hard because then I got distracted by something. And then before you knew it, I was at Shadow Keep. So if you're walking in towards Emir, just a little bit to the right before you get there is Yolan. You'll see them doing a uh, an Ensha lean against a pillar. Oh, that's scary. I don't like that. There are so many new things in this game. 103 new weapons. What's the name of that place? The Cathedral of Manus Meter. Yes, this is going to be a lot of stats, a lot of numbers, but 103 new weapons. Jesus Christ. One dagger, five straight swords. There's only one new dagger. One new dagger. <laughs> uh, five straight swords, three great swords, five colossal swords, one thrusting sword, two heavy thrusting swords, four curved swords, two curved great swords, two katanas, two twin blades, four axes, three great axes, a hammer, a flail, two great hammers, five colossal weapons, three spears, four great spears, two halberds, one reaper, one whip. I want to do a whip build so bad. Five fists, including hands, that apparently you just slide your hand into another hand. It's really gross. Like in Always Sunny, where he's got the big hands? Yes. That's yep. cool. Exactly like that. That's awesome. And there's a one another fist is called the pata, and it's essentially you just have like two swords on the end of your arm. I do, are the backwards curved swords? No. This is a fist weapon. Oh, sweet. The backhand blades are great, though. I just got, I just found one of those. Those are fun. Yeah. Um, one claw, one light bow, one bow, one great bow, two crossbows, one ballista. And that ballista does magic damage and has tracking, which is kind of cool. Damn. A homing rocket launcher. If only my character was smart. Two glintstone staves. Um, one enhances glintstone sorceries. And then the staff of the great beyond. This is diabolical. This staff can do sorceries and incant incantations. So it scales intelligence faith? It can, no, what, I don't know if you're understanding. It can do sorceries and incantations, one weapon. You don't need a seal and a staff. It can do oh, both. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's the only one, and I love it. It's insane. Uh, that scales with intelligence and faith. Good, you, you, I got a lot of faith. You might be a glass cannon with it, but uh, there's three new sacred seals. Two torches, fuck man. You haven't seen a lamenting visage yet, but once you get it, it's a skull, like a decapitated head that you hold up and it glows. It's like a new torch, but you just hold up a head. I love it. It's sick. It's some like God of War shit. Eight new shields, and then we have, of course have eight new weapon types. Um, oh my God, I want to use the attack shield so bad. The, I got the one that- You got one. I, you, I have two now. Okay, so you have all of them. Oh, really? There's two of them. The lion that you get from Freya. Well, that's not really no, an attack No, that's, that's one. not a dueling shield. It's just got a... But I have the one that... Is her name's not Renala? Rolana. Rolana. That's not one either. Yeah, it is because it's got the spike on both ends and you can... You didn't get it. that from Alana though. No, I found that in, the, I think, the storeroom yep. or somewhere. Yep. Yeah. You get both of them from that room, actually. Motherfucker. Uh... Yes, the thrusting shields are a new variant of large shields that can be used to attack or defend. You can perform lunging stabs and also be prepared to block on the fly. Uh, I just need one that doesn't scale with intelligence because I'm not respecting to use a shield. I don't know if um, they can have their affinities changed. I don't think so. And uh, Give it a try. I think they can. Because you can remove the ashes of war from them, so you might be able to change their affinities. Yeah. Give it a try. I'll have to. And go, I'll, go say hi to our boy. I'll have to go take off my Radon armor then, because that is a heavy buff. It's a heavy shield. One thing I've found in this, this, I mean, this game, the enemies are so much quicker. You haven't actually fought a lot of bosses yet in a weird way. Uh, so many of the bosses are combo beasts where you have to dodge multiple attacks in a row. Dude, those fucking, what are the name of the fire guys in the Shadow Keep with the... The Fire Knights? Those guys are nightmares. That's e They're easily the hardest in, like normal enemy I've run into. You're going to meet an uh, enemy called the Horned Warrior. Fuck that, I already hate it. 
The Fire Knight, I love because with my sorceress, she was like, beep, 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 from distance and took him down. And with my great katana religious boy, he, uh, they, they can't attack. If I get a hit, they, they get staggered. So I just keep hitting him and hitting him. See, they, they, and then if I do one, like a, an artful dodge, they can't attack me. I get in close and then I can stagger them pretty easily with the blast of a misplayed. But like getting in close, especially when they just keep attack, especially the one with the two daggers that just spins and spins and spins. And then you dodge for an hour and a half and you're like, this is my chance. And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to light these on fire and attack some more. <laughs> nah, just, I'm going to light these on fire. <laughs> yeah. And then you, I finally get in, I swing and I miss because he backpedals. And then he's like, I'm going to throw fire at you now. I'm just like, you are the most, you are designed against my build. Yeah, and since you fought Mesmer, you fought that one fire knight, I forget their name. There's that on the bridge. Yeah, with the fucking he can unique spells. Yeah. yeah, I do I want to I want to get a weapon that I can put that on cuz that is yeah. got some range. Mm. Do you think it has as much range if I use it though? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Nothing's as good when you use I it. I know. It's a rule. Uh great katanas, the Odachi, far more damage at the cost of a slower attack. There are light great swords. There's three of those in the game. Long, thin blades with a surprisingly long reach. I just found one of those. Which one? Do you remember? Mm, I, I mean, it was pretty early on. I like Rolana's uh, light great swords when you dual wield them. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. And then you can do... Because one's got a Karin design, the other one's got like a Mesmer design. Yeah. yeah. I, I did see a clip of somebody who uses... Uh, one of those swords that does like magic and fire, kind of like uh, the uh, what's the sword they use? The sword of night and flame. Mm -hmm. It's like a similar one, but different art of war on it or something like that. Yeah, and that's uh, that's cool. The like great swords are fun too because uh, my lady, have you got my lady? What is that? Uh, it's like a very artful like uh, the way you move. It's um, is that that very long skinny sword? Yep. Yep. Yeah, and it's got a really sick thrust that like instantly staggers a lot of smaller enemies. Uh, I like the Milady a lot. Those are kind of fun because then they can do stances. Like the Milady, you can do different stances on where you can like hold a stance and the enemy gets close and then you do like a certain yeah. post on top of it. Um, do you know if the Great Katana and Milady, uh, lo do, do you enhance them with somber smithing stones or regular smithing stones? The Great Katana is regular. I'm not sure on Milady. Milady. Yeah, because I'm I'm getting tired of using my somber smithing stones. I wanna I hoard them. That brings up an interesting point. A lot of people, at least on the Reddit, they're like, "Oh, great, another cookbook." Uh, they're like bummed about finding cookbooks, and I'm sitting there. It's like it's why we're here. You know, we're we're out here to. You can't expect every single item to be a game breaking talisman or the dopest weapon ever. It needs to have variety and. What's nice about cookbooks is it increases what you can craft. Yeah. And it also, um, it's lore. Every cookbook is a little bit of lore. And I love it. And I love that there's a shitload of glove warts and smithing stones because I have, have so many new weapons and you need to power them up. And so I want to have everything powered up to at least up to the, like the somber ancient and then the regular ancient. 24 and tw 24 and 9. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, you don't need everything to be like a holy shit moment. In fact, cookbooks are one of my favorite things to find because there's the off chance I'm going to be able to make a new pot. Yeah. And I love fucking pots. Mm. Especially, I noticed I use them a lot more now that I have like the blasphemous blade where you can't grease it. Because I was using, I liked the grease because it was like fights specific. Mm -hmm. Like, oh shit, he's fire. I'm going to bleed him or, you know, whatever. I can't do that anymore, but you can always use pots. Have you ever watched Workaholics? Yes. You know when Anders pulls away his pants before he goes swimming? Yeah. That's how if, uh, it's as cool as that with like, if you go into a battle and you just like grease up your weapon before you go in, it's as cool as ripping off tearaway pants. Oh, 100%. That's how it feels anyway. That's really stupid, but <laughs> it reminded me of that. And it, the, a lot of people are acting like Anders right now when they find a cookbook. And they're like, hey, what's up with all them books? <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I, I have almost every book I found. There's a lot. Um, perfume bottles. Have you found any perfume bottles yet? I think I found one, maybe. But it's just a weapon now. You don't have to craft things for them. Oh, I did not even pay attention to it because I was like, I, ain't, I didn't have time for that in the base game. I don't got time for it now. Dude, 
I, I'm actually just playing as an Aero Pastel model. <laughs> <laughs> I just turn on some really shitty, like, uh, mall techno. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to make an only perfumer build, and his name's going to be Giorgio Armani. <laughs> Armani. Make a commercial. Yeah. Oh, dude, Vati video. Life do that. is fast. Giorgio. <laughs> uh, yeah, Perfumers Rejoice. There are five different forms of sparks that deal elemental damage on demand. You can dual wheel different ones and make little color combinations. They call that a mixologist. Or sparklers. <laughs> sparklers. It was just the 4th of July. Backhand blades. There are three different backhand blades where you wield the blade of the sword opposite to the direction of the wielding hand thumb. Uh, there's... The backhand blades, which is the one that uh, actually looks like swords. The other ones are like these circle things that kind of go all the way around the hand. Like the Chronicle of Riddick blades? Maybe. I don't know. It's been a while. Uh, Throwing blades. It's weird that there's only one throwing blade in that category when there's a lot of throwing weapons in this. There's a throwing shield. Does it recall? Like Captain America's shield? Yep. Uh, Really? There's a throwing great hammer. Your guy spins around like three times and then launches it at an enemy. No shit. It's cool, but I don't think it's got a lot of utility. Yeah, they have tons of different throwing weapons, but the throwing blade is the only one that actually is under throwing blades. Uh, Hand-to-hand arts, which you don't have yet, but you can once you go talk to that monk with that gesture. Yeah. Let's get right down this right. Uh, yeah, martial arts with a quick and varied moveset, staggering combo finishers. There's uh, two different kinds there, and then also different Ashes of War. You can uh, tweak them up a little bit. And then there are two Beast Claws, hand-to-hand with great mobility and rapid attacks. Much broader and bigger attacks than the faster hand-to-hand arts. I did a respec for the final boss. I was trying to go in and do my magic damage and play it safe, and she got spanked. So then I respec to be Beast Claws. Uh, the realm, uh, the realm of shadow changes a person. The land of shadow, because <laughs> you have to adapt. Carly, she went from like, I use this elegant weapon, and I am I wear a robe, and by the end, she's got a bear head on and these fucking claws, and she's covered <laughs> in blood. But yeah, uh, just went full beast mode, and they do blood loss, and you can get a lot of hits in. It's super dangerous, though. Um, a lot of new tools. There's. Uh, the toughest one to get is a charming branch. You have to, you can't get it because you already missed part of that quest, but. Motherfucker. With this branch, you use FP to charm a group of enemies. So you can get, oh, cool. hit like five of them and then they'll all fight against other enemies for you. I like that. There's 12 new greases. Heavy pots. Heavy pots. I love the heavy pots. A lot of new talismans. Um, a lot of good ones. New incantations, 28 new incantations, 14 new sorceries, 16 new ashes of war, 20 new spirit ashes. I won't say what my favorite is because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, and there's some forms, two new forms. W2, 1099R. Lamenter. Is that for taxes? And something else. I won't say what the other one is because that would just be too exciting for you. But you use an item and you look different. Ooh. It's like a whole different thing. That's intriguing. I don't want to say. Pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. I'm I'm blown away by... I mean, it's been so long since I got to rediscover the Lands Between, and I think that's my biggest takeaway from having the DLC and being in the situation that I'm currently in where I have kind of blocked out, blocked out a little bit of some quest lines, and I'm okay with it is the fact that, like, you get to explore again. Like, I played Elden Ring through twice, and but I know where everything is, and I can use a guide if I need, oh, I want this specific weapon right now so that this boss, two bosses from now, is easier to deal with. I don't have that anymore. I don't have a guide. I just am exploring the lands between, and I kind of intuitively know a little bit, like, uh, I've gotten a little bit too far this way or that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Just, like, the sense of, like, finding random-ass, like, caves with death knights in it is pretty fucking cool. Or death knights in general are pretty fucking cool. Like, accidentally coming into a giant castle. And then you're like, I'm in a legacy dungeon now. Oops. Yep. Like, that... I it's, missed that from... It's discovery. It's exploration. 
Yeah. And like I said, it's up there with like Red Dead Redemption 2 in the sense of like immersion you get from it where events will happen in the world or you'll happen upon something that you didn't plan to. And you're like, I guess this is what I'm doing for the next hour. It's it's super refined. The base game is dense and the base game, I couldn't tell you how many little golem dungeons they got. A ton. The little fucking monsters that... Yeah, the little green guys. Yeah, there's so many dungeons of those, and eventually it becomes a bit repetitive. And, you know, if you don't want to play those in the base game, don't do it. What's nice about Shadow of the Earth Tree, it's less is more. Uh, there, There is, I think, only three different of the Forge dungeons. There are three different of the Pot dungeons. And by having less of them, they're all more fun. Uh, I'm, I'm not tired of going into another dungeon It's like, this again okay i i know what to expect but instead every time it's there's a new twist or it's just a it's weird to say less is more with one of the largest most generous dlcs ever but uh and i can see i've seen some complaints that like that the world is huge but it's quite empty and there are some points where there's i don't find an item for a while and i ride torrents around for a, a long time and I'm vibing so hard. I'm out here. Yeah. I'm like, look at this fucking view. Look at this world. I'm exploring. And, you know, it's it's just pure fun, pure exploration. And I, if you always find something around every corner, that's not cool. I, I'd much rather like, oh, well, nothing's here. And then sometimes you do find something. I went under every single waterfall. And I think only one had something behind it. <laughs> See, I like that, though, because there is a point in the first game, especially mid-game, where the the gameplay loop, you're starting to get used to it, and you might be getting a little tired of it, running into, like, another fucking dungeon that looks just like the last one with those little fucking green guys in it. Or maybe you're, like, a little under-leveled to do the next boss, or not strong enough to do the next boss, but you've kind of, you feel like you've exhausted everything behind you, and you hit this little bit of, like, exploration... Uh, fatigue mm-hmm. at least i did where it was like i was so caught up on like not missing anything or like worried i was going to block out certain quest lines and the base game is super dense so it's a little overwhelming at times this like you said less is more it's perfect it's very nice because that's another thing we haven't really talked about is just riding torn around and looking at like the view and the world that you're in breathtaking stunning uh the amount of times I just stop playing. Oh yeah, I've taken screenshots. Yeah, I've, been, I've taken a lot of screenshots. <laughs> I I think that I had a glitch in my game. Uh, you don't know who Egon is yet, and if you're listening and you do, you know that you love Egon. He's very angry. <laughs> Egon's a very angry man. <laughs> um, I think something glitched at the end of the battle because I I got a video of it. You know how when you summon someone for a battle, they disappear. Egon disappeared, but then the last spell he cast just kept repeating for like five minutes. I just left it going, and it's just this dragon screaming. He's doing a little (laughs) incantation, and it doesn't stop. I was like, this dude, he even left, and he's still screaming. (laughs) He just can't let it go. You're going to, when you get to something named Bale. Make sure to summon Egon inside of the arena. Something I learned in this is that, okay, there's a lot of summons for bosses. If you summon um, outside of the arena, the boss has more HP. If you summon inside the arena, it doesn't affect their HP. Really? You can summon certain enemies. Uh, oh. It's not like your spirit ashes, but you can summon inside of Mesper either Horn Scent or Yolan. Did not even notice that. Well, you don't have you don't have Yolan progressed enough to do that. And Horn Scent, I don't know if you've done enough to progress that either. Yeah. Damn. Well, I'm going back. Be- I'm go I'm retreating. I'm going back. I had to check some shit out. You do what you do. Well, I definitely need to go back to get stronger to fight to fight Mesmer, but I am enjoying having the DLC. Yeah. I def it's a definite ten out of ten. Mm, easy. Yeah. I don't I don't really get why people are complaining about the things they've been complaining about. Like, it's difficult. Yes, that's what we wanted, right? Like, dude, I love getting spanked. And so hot. It makes the game all that more rewarding when, like, 
it starts very small. You get your ass kicked. This is my gameplay loop. I get my ass kicked two, three times. Then that one attack that keeps fucking me up, I dodge it for the first time. You get it. And then I immediately die again because I'm like, fuck yeah. And then after a little bit, you're dodging multiple attacks in a row. And then you find your your window of opportunity that you can get a hit or two in. And you don't want to you don't want to get greedy and do two attacks at once. No. No. Not with oh. But then when you finally beat that boss, I think back to like, all right, the first time I walked in here, I was dead within two seconds. Yeah. And then now I just did a 14 minute battle and I still have two, te- I have two flasks left. Like it's learning. It's accomplishments. I mean, yeah. I don't get that excited in other bosses. When I beat a boss in FF seven rebirth, there was zero excitement except for Gilgamesh or there's a couple, but like this one, every boss, it's just a challenge. It's amazing on my second playthrough, bosses like Gaius that I died for an hour straight. I got third try this time, and it's partially my build, partially because I know what they're doing. Yeah, uh, there's an enemy called Romina, and two maybe two hours. Nah, I don't know. A long time. I died a long time. It was probably ninety minutes, and I did it first try in my second playthrough. Also, I'm doing different builds, but just knowing what their attacks are and what to expect. It's uh, it's very different. I guess I can't really ask you what's your like favorite. What's your favorite enemy you've fought so far? Like your f- my favorite regular enemy. Yeah, like favorite anything. What's what's shining through on the DLC for you so far? Uh, Mesmir's definitely been the highlight so far because I can't beat him, and because <laughs> I can't beat him. And his design is awesome. His legacy dungeon is awesome. I like everything about him. He's very heavy metal. But if we're talking like other shit in the game, uh, the Death Knights, I think I've encountered two of them so far. Love Death Knights. Uh, they're a lot of fun. I like those guys quite a bit. I do not like the little monk guy that you said with the, the twirly blade thing. Those guys I don't like. That only drop like 3,000 runes. Yes. What did you think of your little demi-human swordsman? Oh, yeah. Svash, Slosh. Uh, there's Anzi and there's Yash. Yash. Yes. You fight one, you get the spirit ash for the other. Uh, Yash was fun. Uh, the, fir- I- the first time you, like, there's another one you see in the wild. First time you walk up and they just jump into the air and they like just straight up Assassin's Creed or like Batman Arkham Knight. Love it. Uh, the new golem, the little green guy with the one leg thing that like will just jump on oh, top of you. At you. Don't like that guy. First time I walked into that uh, dungeon, I was like, ah, okay. So I hate you now. Yep. And the fireball cannon golem shoots way too fast. The little one. Yeah. The He's got the big like cannon head. Mm-hmm. He shoots too fast. You can get that as a spirit ash. Not to be underestimated. Oh, I used the ancestral follower for a while who has the giant bow. Yeah. That dude's super underrated. You need to start using every new spirit ash. Just take your runes, go and level them up and come back. I, I'm so nervous to like... Well, I'm not using any of the ancient dragon smithing stones, but like I resource hoard still. You know, I my first time with the final boss, I walked in with I think forty rune arcs. I, have I got seven. down to ten. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yep, I know it's bad. If he's weak to fire, I'll be okay. <laughs> you are weak to the final boss in general. Just yeah. like I got to do some leveling up. Yes. You're going to be in a lot of pain. I threw my neck out fighting the boss. I'm not joking. <laughs> I was so stressed. I like I felt my neck just like, oh, fuck. And I couldn't move my neck for like two days. It was that bad. Um, I was riding Torrent around, and I saw a rune bear in the DLC. Mm. And I turned around and said no. And I put a little marker on the map of a skull icon. And I was like, not I'm, today. Not today. I do not have Get time that for this. evil away from don't me. don't have time for this bullshit. Did not want to do it. Yeah, but you want to get those bear claws to put on your hands. I do, but it's not worth it yet. The attacks are very cool. Yeah. um, Mesmer's probably my favorite boss. I like the putrescent knight. That gave me some Orphan of Cause vibes. I do like the lion. The dancing lion was pretty cool. There's a video I posted in the Discord, which you might have been avoiding. Um, I did see it now without the cape on. Yeah, those two dudes are funny. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, Rolana was great. She's probably my least favorite so far. Oh, I was a big fan. Yeah. I like the hippo a lot. 
the hippo was cool. When the first time you get him to his second phase and he's like, I'm a porcupine hippo now. I was like, oh, fuck it. Are you serious? <laughs> That's when he killed me because he like just rains a bunch of fucking golden needles on you. And I'm like, this is an unfair attack. I didn't see it coming. Favorite areas for me, I'll say the abyssal woods. You don't know them. <laughs> Least favorite, the ancient ruins of Rao. Did not like them. Um, is that the green place? It's a place. North, northwest. Yeah, northwest, like out the west side of the Shadow Keep. Yep. It's very green. I did not care for that. It's a different kind of dungeon. It's like this big open world dungeon. And yeah. I get the vibe they're going for, and it is not something I liked. I walked in. It's too repetitive. It gives me like the library in Halo 1 vibes. Mm. And that is the worst thing I can say about something. I walked in. I found a site of grace. I, I sat at it. And then I went back. Yep. And I was like, I should definitely not be here. Yeah, well, that's the problem. I'd like turn a corner when I was trying to be completionist about stuff. It's like, fuck, this is an area. So I just drop a little marker and I'm like, I got to come back to that. Yeah, uh, I'd like the reusing of certain enemies. It's sparse. Like there's only two abductor virgins in the whole game. I I appreciate the their ability to uh, not just spam things. I like that the the map is... uh, Got a lot to it and different segments with different enemies. The new spider scorpions are horrible. Uh, oh, I don't like those guys either. I don't like those Especially guys. Especially the big boys. The big boys are gross and they give me the heebie-jeebies. It's something about the way they move. I One of my biggest uh, oh my god moments is a certain set of ruins southeast. I won't say what kind because Tyler will know when he sees it. That sounds gross. Yeah, it's probably going to be a bunch of the scorpion spiders. You'll know. Um, the One of the biggest holy shit moments I had is when you're in the first jar dungeon uh, where you find Sash. Or so, Yash, yeah. Yash. Yeah, the Bellaret Joe. Um, when you're running and then the fucking stairs just come out from underneath you, I think two drops of pee came out. I was uh, so startled. My, well, my first time I went around the corner and I started seeing jars like, cool, jar stuff. And there's a jar tipped over and... The first one, like, crawls out. The innards crawl out. I was like, no shit. Yeah, I was like, I... <laughs> I've been sitting here asking you every podcast, like, what's inside of you, dude? And we're like, I don't know, just a bunch of beer. And it turns out it was really fucking gross. Yeah. You texted... <laughs> I texted you, Alexander does not like this. <laughs> and you don't know a lot about um, what's going on with the jars or, like, why the jars and who the jars... But it explains kind of like Godric. There's some other things that are being explained through some of that lore. And I'll save that for when we get to another time. Uh, yes, we have some uh, Patreon um, comments here. I asked our Patreon supporters what's going on, including some from just the Patreon that haven't made it to the Discord. We recommend you all go over there because we have a lot of discussions on there. Devin Diedrich says... It's been said a million times already, but Egon is a Boba Fett level scene stealer for as little dialogue and scream time as he has. He's entered my holy trinity of Souls-like NPCs along Solaire of Astoria and Eileen the Crow. Curse you, Bale. Okay. And then Dish commented, yeah, I just came to say that exact same thing. (laughs) Listening to him talk shit while launching harpoons was amazing. JV3. My favorite they fly now moment in the game happened in the DLC when you find the normal skeletons rising from their graves and they grow little Icarus wings and fly around spraying death blight. I couldn't help but laugh out loud at my favorite new fucked up little guys. (laughs) They fly now. Bryant. We're nearly done with it and it's been an incredible experience. Every area and dungeon is so expertly crafted. This is peak from software I love having all of the new weapons, Ashes of Wars, and Spirit Summons to add to my builds, not to mention some really great fashion and interesting talismans. I really enjoyed the Count Amir and St. Trina quest lines. They were so cool. I also loved it when I stumbled into the Hinterlands. Getting to experience that reminded me of when I discovered Jarberg. You don't know anything of what I just said. <laughs> the only things I've disliked so far are the Fire Golems. Seriously, they take way too long to kill, even with the cheese. And Commander Gaius. Seriously, fuck that fight. Commander Gaius. Yep. 
Where is Commander Guys? You haven't fought him. And you know what's funny? After you uh, kill Commander Guys, you find his wife running around with his pants afterwards. Oh, that's fun. Judge Tempest says, The Size of Limgrave, A Tarnished Tale by Hidetaki Miyazaki. <laughs> and I, that's all you really got to say. It's not the size of Limgrave. Favorite bosses, Rolana, Mesmer, and Midra. Favorite area, the Shaman Village. Favorite enemies, Horned Warriors, Divine Bird Warriors. Judge Tempest, you are into pain and punishment in the <laughs> worst way. Favorite thing, Moore's voice actor and also the verticality map design. Favorite lore, something something jar. I won't spoil that for you. It's Alexander, Alexander's brother. I wish. That'd be cool. So, uh, some other things that are going on with Elden Ring right now. George R. R. Martin uh, made comments about Elden Ring being adapted into a TV show or a movie. I was going to bring this up if you didn't. And I dislike the idea unless it's animated. If they don't do it, if they do it any other way, I, am, I don't think I would enjoy it. Robert Eggers directing. Then it would be okay. Whoever directed The Northman. Robert, uh, yeah, Robert Eggers. Robert Eggers, yes. Maybe, maybe Ari Aster. Ari Aster, absolutely. But it, 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 there are very few filmmakers I would trust with this. I don't think it lends itself to physical and CGI. I don't think it would work well. I think if you made like an animated series, that would be the way to go about it. Yeah, it'd be much easier. Because you're... I mean, imagine seeing a CGI grafted Godric. Well, and the you, budget you, on that would be insane. You'd have to have it be smaller. If you're not going to do the full series of like all of it, you'd have to just have it be like the Night of Black Knives. You just have like a 60 minute movie about the Night of Black Knives and just show what happened there. No. Sign me up for that. George R. R. Martin, though, was being a real coy boy about it. I'm not saying nothing, not a word, nothing. I don't want to get in no trouble. I don't know anything about this. And it's like, George, you're being very obvious about this. Yeah. God bless your heart. I think I saw the same interview. Someone's like, where's the winds of winter? And he's like, well, I was just writing it on the plane. He has been making jokes about it lately, which I'm still believing it's coming out this year. Even if it's never coming out. (laughs) Never lose that hope. The Strategy Guide Part 3 is available for pre-order. Comes out the end of September, early October, allegedly. I already got it pre-ordered. It's just all Shadow of the Erd Tree. It's going to be essentially what the first two guides did, but just for the DLC. Uh, Spotify now has the Shadow of the Erd Tree soundtrack on it. Good. I, I don't listen to the soundtrack recreationally often. We're going to be uh, tailgating later. I probably won't put on um, the bail theme. I did. I put on... That would be my walkout music, though, if I was a baseball player. (laughs) And then everyone would say, curse you, Brad! Oh, that'd be good. Um, I have a record player now, so I can buy the Elden Ring vinyl and the Hades vinyl. Say goodbye to money. I did. (laughs) A a lot of vinyl. Yeah, and then... uh, So we got Elden Dogs. Our, Our path going forward. I did a rough estimation of how many episodes we're going to have. And there's probably another 20 episodes, I'd say pretty easily. Music to my ears. Music to my ears. I think it's like something like 55 would get us through covering the maps. And then there will be, you know, a source unit incantation to the DLC. I want to do weapons. I want to do armor. We might have one mixed bag episode which just covers some talismans and tools maybe uh if it's worth talking about bestiary bestiary for sure at least one part i think it's about one part because there's like 50 new enemies we also need the lore episode that once i beat it you can then explain to me what i just did the i my oh well there's also gonna be the board game comes out this year we can do a board game episode maybe and i want the last couple episodes of elden dogs in over a year from now, ways out, um, to be like a two-parter just covering the timeline of everything. Lore start to finish. Yeah. and Just in time for them to announce the sequel. Oh, yeah. I hope so. Um, I wouldn't say no to that. I, I think this is the last Elden Ring DLC. 
for the time being. I don't think they're going to make another DLC for this. I think From Software is moving on to something else. But I think Elden Ring 2 should definitely be happening. I don't know what story there is for it, though, you know? Yeah, well... There's a lot... I mean, there, there, of course, could be anything happening, but I like where things are after this DLC. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder how it'll work. Is there more lands in the lands between? Maybe there's a different part of the world. The lands above, the lands below, below the, lands the love beside. below. There you go. The love betwixt. I could take it. The lands begrudged. Um, the lands over there. Hey, what's over there? Yeah, everybody, it's a Midwest version. I of the am game. demigod Mariko. <laughs> no, <laughs> not another one. Yeah. What I'm doing right now is I spent a fucking 90 minutes today looking at everything that I'm missing weapons, armors, spirit ashes, ashes of war, incantations, sorceries, talismans. If I did that, it'd take me forever. Well, because I already did with my main guy, Martin Lionel. I got everything that I could collect. And then I have a list of things I could only get on the second playthrough. And now I'm going to go in and find everything that I didn't get this time. Uh, the final boss, the Remembrance, has three things. So there are three spots in the game in Shadow of the Erd Tree. Little coffins where you can duplicate Remembrances like the, uh, the wandering mausoleums in the base game. I have so many Remembrances. Yeah. Um, so... That's, I made this, oh, it's so tedious. And you know what's really tough is finding a list online that shows you your armor and weapons in the same, like it shows the list in the same order that they are in the game. Because Vector Life doesn't have that. You can sort by weight, but even that's super confusing when you're looking at 300 weapons or whatever. But I found a website that has them in the right order. But after beating the final boss one more time, I'm going to chill a little bit. You're going to play college football 25 when it comes out on the 19th? I got, into the, I got the new Monkey Ball Rumble, and I haven't tried it yet. Oh, well. Reviews are saying it's the best Monkey Ball since Monkey Ball 2 in the GameCube. So I'm like, I heard that, and I'm just like, here's $50. You can fuck off. <laughs> and if they're wrong, but. Yeah, I got I to gotta beat the DLC by the 19th, because once college football 25 comes out, I'm going to be playing that a little bit. And I know me. I know me, I'll set down Elden Ring and then I'll be three seasons in with Michigan, three national titles later. You know, I, I, I'm so excited to go back into the base game with all of the new DLC armaments and spells. Didn't you already do New Game Plus? No. I've never done a New Game Plus. Me either. And I'm, I'm excited gonna... to start over and just, oh, hi there, little buddy. Hey, Tree Sentinel. <laughs> Want to play? Yeah. Is there a cap to leveling out? No. Oh, well, yeah, but it's fucking high. Yeah. It's like 900, I think. I don't Jesus know. Jesus Christ. Some people are on New Game. You're, if you're a listener and you're up there, what's the, what's the highest one you got? Now, if you're not on our Discord and you're on our Patreon, go to the Discord. I'll send you another link. We have a lot of discussion over there. I want to know who's the furthest New Game Plus level. I think it might be Brian, but I want to know... Because I haven't done New Game Plus because I was waiting for the DLC because I want to get completionist about it and collect everything and I just start a new character. I just start a new character. I was thinking about just starting a new character and doing a dual wielding dex build because it's the one type of build I haven't really tried out because I'm so reliant on being dis having distance or having the shield. Yeah. And now I'm like, maybe I, uh, New Game Plus I do Rivers of Blood finally. Maybe I do an arcane build and just hate myself. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe. An, an arcane. Oh. I'm going to do an endurance build. <laughs> an arcane endurance build. You're going to hate it. <laughs> what is that, like peach iced tea? You're going to hate it. <laughs> yeah. So up next is the Gravesite Plains. We're going to dive in. And then Bal Ballarat Settlement and Sk Shadow Altus. Shadow Altus. Shadow Altus 2. Cerulean Coast. Jacket Peak, Shadow Key, Shadow Tree Base, Cathedral of Madness Matter, Ancient Ruins of Rao, something something. Yeah, 
Uh, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. But uh, thanks for tuning in. If you're listening to this and it's uh, relatively shortly after the DLC came out, that means you're on our Patreon and we su- appreciate and support you. And you support us. But we support you. Yes. You need something, we're here for you. You appreciate it. We appreciate you. Special thanks to executive producers Rykard Chrissy Nick, Malakip the Black Blade, Blaggard Big Brian Ward, Jordan Hoslow, Sorceress of Blood, Festering Fingerprint Phil Wright, Iron Fist Phil Just Phil, Knights Cavalry Coldo Gardno, Bell Bearing Hunter Bryant Ross, Crucible Knight Kelly Gutowski, and Justin Melismer the Impaler. Uh, we appreciate all of your support. Uh, yeah, and can't wait to just dive in further and further into this DLC until whatever Brad was is gone and then my wife is married to Ansbach. <laughs> now, I have exactly three hours before I have to leave for work, so I'm going to go play. Yes. Thanks for listening. The journey has begun again. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>